for an inductor, we said I is equal to 1 over L V dt. As for the capacitor, we can set V is equal to EZ times delta. Now, because time is discretized in our FDTD model, this integral here is going to turn into a summation. So that means I, for our circuit element of an inductor, is going to be equal to, I'm going to put this delta in front, we have delta over L, and then we're going to be uh, summing EZ across every time step. So I'm going to put delta T in front, it says all these EZs are going to be multiplied times delta T, and then the summation will go from M equal 1 to N, whatever time step we're at, and here will just be the EZ component at time step M. Going back to the pointwise form of Ampere's law as shown here, if we now consider the EZ component having the inductor, then we can set JCE again is going to be equal to ICE for the inductor divided by delta X times delta Y. And now for ICE, we can plug in the expression we had on the previous slide for the current of the inductor. So on the left side, we have the same thing as before. From the curl of H, we take the Z component. Then we have epsilon naught, dEZ dt. And here, we'll have delta times delta T over L, and the summation M equal 1 to N, EZ M. Now if we apply central differencing, we're going to get on the left side, I'm not going to write it all out, we're going to get the same as before, and the E component is also going to be the same as before when we wrote it out for the capacitor. But now, let's write out this last term. So we have delta times delta T over L, and M goes from 1 to N, and EZ is going to be at location I, J, K plus a half, where our inductor is, and we'll have time step M. Solving for the future value of EZ is going to be easier in this case, because there is only one future EZ component, and that's going to be right here. Here we have EZ N plus 1 minus EZ N over delta T, so here, this is the only future value of EZ. Over here, this is all previous values of EZ at previous time steps. So in this case, when we solve for the future value of EZ, all we need to do is move this one term to the left side and move all the other terms to the right side. In the end, we get this update equation for the EZ component at the inductor. In other words, we have a regular update of the EZ component at the location of the inductor. So this part is just a regular update. The only difference here is that we need to add on, or in this case, since there's a minus sign, subtract this extra term. Now remember, when we implemented the two-dimensional PML, we also had a summation over all time steps. Here, we should efficiently implement this summation just as we did for the two-dimensional PML which means we shouldn't save the EZ field at all the time steps over the course of the entire simulation, and we should not reevaluate this entire summation every time step. So I'm going to say do not re-evaluate entire summation every dt. Instead, Implement a running sum, where at every time step, you just add on the newly updated EZ value to your running sum. Try running your model with an inductor at the base of the crane. And let's try a capacitor with L equal to 50 microhenries. Let's see how this affects the current on the crane.